bet. So what I was saying, what Devin Haney did that was important for credibility, he already knew, okay, I don't really got the machine behind me, but I'm plugged in enough to get fights, so I'm gonna get my credibility up, and he sacrificed. He did everything in the WBC. The WBC been getting so much money because that's the belt that Floyd, that's the sanctioning body that Floyd been fucking with the most. Niggas don't know, Floyd has never had, in any of the divisions he's been in, he's never had all four of the belts at one time. So in some divisions, Floyd wasn't giving, he wasn't getting, like WBO been with Bob Irm. Floyd wasn't getting money with the WBO. They getting money with Bob Irm and shit. So they was getting money with Pacquiao. See how they kept them niggas away? You fuck the money up when you get all the belts. So Devin worked this way up and you got the four major shows. You got the WBC, WBO, IBF, and the WBA. The WBC, they're corrupt, wicked ass. They coming up with routines and they did this shit to protect Canelo because Canelo was the money nigga after Floyd. But it's too many niggas on his line that they like, well, we gotta rig this shit. This nigga is the money nigga. But you got rules with, by law, you could get sued in boxing. It's certain shit by law. They could take shit to court when you're not given a certain shot, title shot. So the WBC comes up with some bullshit called the franchise belt, which it probably was a fee, but the champ could be the franchise belt, meaning he does not have to defend it against his mandatory. And you gotta meet some type of qualification. Really, the qualification, do you got the money back? Yeah. Can you afford it? Yeah. They did that for Carnello. Can't nobody, nobody, they bitched and complained, but what they gonna really do? Carnello, no, he's, he's. And I don't fuck with Carnello, cause he don't really, he don't really try to get black fighters bread, to be honest, in my opinion. Unless he have to. Right now, that nigga's at the point where it's probably, he know it's the last rodeo, and he gotta go see Al Heyman, cause that's where the money at for his ass. It's chess. So then, Roman Trinko, he ain't got the money like Carnello, but he got Bob Irm. Bob Irm. Bob said Lomachenko team requested it, but long story short, he requested to get the franchise. You know why? Because Devin Haney worked his way up to be the mandatory, and he like, man, fuck, I gotta fight this slick fighter who, I don't think they feared Devin Haney like how motherfuckers was fearing Mike Tyson. Niggas was fearing career ending shit with Mike. Niggas tried to avoid the young Floyd Mayweathers and the young Devin Haney's because they expose you because they box so great. They'll beat you to the point where you just look. You will never hit that ceiling now. So he ducks Devin Haney. The franchise and Devin Haney took it to the press. Lomachenko tried to deny it. Da -da -da, whatever the like deny doing the franchise shit because it make them look cowardly. It don't go with what they're promoting. You, you the gold medal. You the great amateur. You the four hundred times. You mean to tell me this little black guy, the young nigga, got you playing games? Long story short, they elevated Devin Haney to the regular champion and had Lomachenko the franchise. But by law, by law, Devin Haney became champ. It ain't his fault that he ain't. When you hear lineal, that means you really became champ from beating the man. At that time, Lomachenko is the man in the division. So Devin Haney is more of a title holder at this point. Cause, cause, because Lomachenko robbed him the moment to become champ. So now he's just a title holder. WBC regular, Lomachenko got status. He's the, the new franchise champ. But it fucked the game up because now you got Tiafimo Lopez, who Bob Arum and them built up to fight. Because it's in-house. If somebody gonna beat Loma, it's gonna be somebody we built up and put money in. Tiafimo Lopez, they build him up. Naturally bigger than Lomachenko. He beat Lomachenko. 
the public is mad because they really want to promote it. They wanted to promote it like undisputed. But shout out to great people like 78 Sports TV, Black Fight Fan TV, because they kept it in the media saying, no, that ain't undisputed. That nigga ducked his mandatory and relinquished the belt. It was a unification, but it wasn't. So now Tiafimo, he's doing the same shit. Different fighter, same master. Who's the master? Bob Irm. He's avoiding Devin Haney. Man, whatever, he ain't the real champion. I'm the undisputed. That, like, like, even Javante shitted on Devin. You the email champ. They emailed you the belt. And I'm looking like y'all gonna discredit this man like he could put a gun in Lomachenko head and make him get in the ring. I give him a victory for intimidating them niggas. He was scared to say him. Or it might just wasn't good business the same way like the Shakur Stevenson shit. Matter of fact, I'm gonna be real. I ain't gonna shit on Lomachenko. I ain't even gonna shit on Bob. It's business. Devin Haney wasn't going to bring the bread that it needed at that time because they already spent money into building Tiafimo Lopez. That's the fight that they've been building for Lomachenko. We're not about to let Devin come and fuck that up. So with him not letting Devin fuck it up, he beats Lomachenko. Now he got all the belts. He's calling himself undisputed in the public, but people like, it can't be because the belt, you know, the bullshit. So, your 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 undisputed is being disputed. You got to somebody got to see this nigga because he put himself in credibility stance. That's why sometimes when you choose the legacy, you get the money on the back end if you're really great. That's when some niggas sacrifice and take that twenty five percent. Some of these niggas is capping. Yeah. Devin, so look what Devin do. Tia Fima Lopez say, okay, fuck that. Uh. The only thing that can trump a mandatory fight is a unification fight, which Lomachenko, that's all he had to do, is just commit to fighting Tiafimo and not look like a bitch-ass nigga. But I think he didn't even want to fight him, period. So it's right. like, let that nigga yeah. out of the belt. Yeah. He wasn't really chasing Undisputed for real. Yeah. And you fuck around and lose to Tiafimo. Tiafimo say fuck unification, which by law, a unification bout is the only bout that could trump a nigga who's in his man. Man, I didn't fought my way up. I need my mandatory shot. He say, I'm going to go to fight. I'm going to give my mandatory a shot. Tia Fimo. Man, this is what helped Devin. Some niggas get ahead of themselves and don't know who's really pulling the strings. And then that's when the slave master do the nigga a favor. Because they know the nigga could beat the nigga that's acting. I need you to beat my slave that's acting up. Tia Fimo feels like he... Bigger than he felt like he got there, and Bob like nigga, I made you. You better do this shit my way. He tried to take the money to Triller. Remember the Triller shit with the Mike Tyson and all that. Bob ain't like it. He said, "I'm gonna fuck him." He went and fought Cambosis on the Zone. You know Bob Earn with ESPN. He did some bullshit. Bob Marley made a phone call. If that motherfucker close, strip that nigga. Because we already talked to Cambosis people and he already said if he win, he fucking with Roman Jingo. We'll deal with that Devin Haney problem in a minute, but we fucking T.O. because he going to get the belts and feel like he ain't going to give us our money. That's what he did. That motherfucker. But, but Tia Fimo, a dumb nigga, he really did lose. He got beat that night by Cambosis. You duck Devin Haney, which could have been a bigger fight, in my opinion, at that time, because Cambosis was in Australia. What blew him up was beating Tiafimo Lopez. That's what made him big in America. We have to salute George Cambosis. The LDBC need to salute champions like George Cambosis, even though he did his little bullshit, made Devin do the two fight shit. It's business, but he gave him an opportunity. I like George Cambosis. Now that he's not the champ, I think you repay George Cambosis with letting him fight, fight. You know, let him get some checks. Let him fight a Lomachenko. Let that nigga fight one of them other niggas, you know what I'm saying, that might be on the way down. Let him get a check. Because he didn't do the dumb politics shit. All he did, and I ain't about to get mad at niggas for doing business. He said, so this what happened. 
Devin Haney, now, now the business of boxing, they wanted to say, fuck Devin Haney. We want George Cambosis versus Lomachenko because they like, man, this nigga George Cambosis is really flat-footed. Tia Fimo, a nigga who's going to fight you back and forth. It worked for George Cambosis. He beat him, beat him the fuck up. But Lomachenko and Devin Haney, they boxers. They slick. I knew they going to be, you know what I'm saying? Styles make fights. They said, fuck, we cannot put Lomachenko in there because Devin Haney been so patient. He positioned himself so well. Now, by law, they can't do it now. You get where I'm coming from? They got to fight him. Because guess what? George Cambosis have no, he got all the belts except for the Devin Haney, meaning he can't go do a fake unification. He has to fight the mandatory. And guess who the mandatory is? Devin the Dream Haney. So George Cambosis, who wasn't feeling like they could beat Devin Haney, they did good business. They And this is another part that people got to pay attention to the chessboard in boxing. Sometimes it's different levels. George Cambosis did so good by beating Tia Fimo, he really made his money with Devin Haney because he was in position. So this is what happens behind closed doors. Okay, Devin, we, we believe you're going to beat George. But you need George. You need George to solidify you. So this is what we going to do. You going to get the 25%. You going to have to fight us in Australia. And we got to have a rematch clause. And we going to have the same percentages in the rematch clause. And in the rematch, it's still going to be in Australia. You do it. Please say no. Please say no. Because that could be our reason. Because, you know, we couldn't legally come to agreement. Devin Haney said, I'm going to choose legacy and get my money on the back end. I'm going to let you niggas fuck me over two fights because I know I could beat this nigga. And not that I beat him, I got all the belts and everything go through me. He did that. He sacrificed. He did what Shakur wasn't willing to do with Devin. I get him. You know what I'm saying? Because I believe if, it was, if Devin had to do that and it was Shakur instead of George, I don't think it would have been smart to take those incentives, but I believe he felt like he could beat the nigga George, but it's still a sacrifice. He sacrificed money, two fights. He he sacrificed fighting that nigga in his country with the whole country behind the nigga. But what he did is I could beat this nigga. I'm going to build a fan base in Australia. Why I do it? Devin Haney, God is working with him, bro. Like he's, he's developing an authentic you see what I'm saying? He positioned himself well, bruh. So, in a nutshell, that was the difference. Like, that was the same scenario with the 2075, 25. 25. Mm -hmm. Which, who you, are you willing to sacrifice? Yeah. Yeah. That let me know Shakur Stevenson is a, the shit he doing in the media is a bluff. Everybody know Devin Haney going to 140. It's not time for them two to fight yet. You know what I'm saying? But me, personally, I would have had Shakur. Me, personally, these niggas is out of touch. Get me in boxing. Because we could promote it the real way. All you dumb niggas had to do was just promote it real. You know it ain't time. Let that nigga go up the weight class and talk to the media. Yeah, we going to get in the future. I already know. Tell the media the truth. It'll make motherfuckers fuck with Shakur more. Nah, they ain't gonna sacrifice this just yet. We got, I got more work to do. Let him move up. I'm gonna dominate this for a little bit. It, it's making it more realistic. Now you're gonna have your fans really tune and see if you do what you said you do. The baddest niggas in boxing, in my opinion, is Deontay Wilder and Earl Spence when I look at the last 10 years. Because both them niggas did what they said they was gonna do. They never duck no smoke. That's why Earl said one, one of Earl's nicknames is Free Smoke Jr. I'm I change, I, I'm going with Earl now. I thought it was Bud, but it's something with Earl's spirit, bruh. It's something with Earl's spirit that I'm liking. No bullshit, bruh. Them niggas is understanding legacy. To me, turns Crawford acting too. I mean, I'm already accomplished. Like, not saying you not, but you really, man, I know, but yeah, okay, bud, you did what you did. I ain't never getting the ring. I'm not gonna. But if you retired today, and you didn't fight Earl, we'll forget you in five years. Straight up. Straight up. In 20, you'll be forgotten like a motherfucker. It's nothing. We'll never forget Sugar Ray. 
fuck can you forget Sugar Ray when he gave you the brawl in Montreal? Will Fred, the No Moss, the Hitman, Leonard versus Hagler. But if you would have retired without Earl, you would have been fucked, bruh. And if your money ran out, you'd be one of them niggas trying to come back to get it. Come on now. Andre Ward needed that white Russian nigga Kovalov because he was built to be a killer. And Andre Ward beat the big bad wolf. It was the perfect, he can roll now. Ain't nobody saying, man, but Andre, Andre ain't leave no doubt. He was the best at his time. I wouldn't have known that with Crawford if he would have not fought Earl. His shit would have been doubt. Because who he fought? I know what you accomplished, but who did you fight? Don't act like who did you fight ain't important. Earl and Deontay Wilder have been the only niggas since day one not playing no politics. Wilder was... Give me AJ. Give me Fury. It was no games. Earl Spence told niggas what he gonna do. I'm gonna clean up my side of the street. Then I'm gonna fuck with Bud. Niggas wanna play games. Bud, if you the best, shouldn't he do that? I wouldn't have wanted to see him fight you before he fought Sean Porter. It doesn't make sense. Let me see him get tested first. Because right now they saying he the best. Let's see if he can be the best. Okay, oh, okay, he... Sean Porter really tested him, but he, he grinded it out and he got the knockdown. You got to salute people like Sean Porter because he's, what I say, the credibility. He's in the credible lane. He going to make money off credit. I might not bring the people like his personality, but he's going to bring the credit. Great dancing partner. You beat Danny, one of the great Philadelphia fighters. You beat Ugas up. Earl went to England and beat up Kale Brook. That was the beginning. He cleaned everything the fuck up. The only thing that I wish Earl was able to do is not fuck up the retina and would have been able to fight Pacquiao. That would have made... It's two things that would have made Earl versus Bud even bigger. For me, if Keith Thurman's silly ass would have beat Pacquiao and then beat Earl, and, or, and then fight Earl, because obviously if he would have beat Pacquiao, to be honest, at one point Keith Thurman and Earl, it wasn't even decided who's the big fish for uh, Bud, for it's going to be between them two. At that time, people wanted to see. It was no, people think, oh man, I think Earl could beat him, but we had to see it. Now we time that went on by, they like, man, fuck Thurman. But, by them, by, but numbers mean shit. By them not fighting Thurman, it still take a little bit away from the overall legacy of Bud. Because it'll be whoever went between Bud and Earl. Ooh, they won. But they never fought Keith Thurman. It don't matter if Keith Thurman was silly. It doesn't matter if people don't like his curse. They didn't fight. I'm not God. I didn't see it. Yeah, I believe they can beat Keith Thurman, but how do they beat Keith Thurman? See, that part plays a part on how great you are. I believe Earl and Bud can beat Keith Thurman, but I do not know how they can beat him. I'm not convinced they... Keith Thurman, to me, is a, the, one of the great fighters of this generation, you know, this crop that came. He was one of the ones. And neither one of them fought him. We in a fucked up dumbass Earl. That's one thing. The second thing that hurt the fight, by Keith Thurman not beating Pacquiao, it was to a great fighter, so we was like, okay, all right. But when we got Earl versus Pacquiao, it's like, okay, yeah. By Earl fucking up and Ugas beating them and Earl versus Ugas, it just, I mean, he got to beat him, but it was just, we seen Ugas get beat before, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, it would have been great to see Earl changing to the God because he would have had to fight a legendary fighter that he way bigger than. But this is an all time great fighter that we've never seen quit. And Earl, the nigga who break niggas will. So with, with, with the greatness of Pacquiao would have made Earl be in some shit he'd never been in. 
That would have been a mystery right there. Not that I think Pacquiao could beat Earl. The heart, though, bro, to fight Earl at that point of his career, that made me, I got to get my popcorn and see this. This some. This is this is Pac-Man. <laughs> we was robbed of that opportunity. Injuries fuck shit up. God got his own plan. So I believe the fight is two notches below what it really could have been. And I believe it's because these niggas don't know how to promo. Terrence Crawford was not a good promoter. Like, I'm talking about of himself. Repetitive shit be saying. And, and, and I give Earl credit with his... Uh, his titles, his names and shit, the big fish, the truth, da 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 da. But I think Earl along the way got undisciplined. You know what I'm saying? That type of shit means shit. You gotta take this shit serious. You gotta take it serious. People fail to realize these motherfuckers are so behind in this era. When Sugar Ray Leonard fought Tommy Hearns, I need you dumb niggas to know this. Sugar Ray Leonard was 25 and Tommy Hearns was 22. And already, if you go listen to the commentary, it was legendary. People already know they was in history. Both them niggas was already truly defined at that time. They had to settle it. It's either one of it's the hitman or the sugar man. They already was legendary. They already was hunting niggas. And it didn't take them that long. And, 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 and y'all can talk all that money shit you want. Earl Spence and Terrence, at that point, neither, and that was in the early 80s. Y'all haven't made more money than Sugar Ray Leonard at that time. Sugar Ray Leonard was getting more money than you niggas at that time. Sugar Ray Leonard, the first boxer to make a hundred million from boxing in that time. So. So y'all niggas better start dictating y'all own career and doing a better job. It's not just about the boxing no more. Y'all gonna have to learn some shit from Macho Man Randy Savage or uh, something. Y'all gonna have to add a little bit more charisma. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like a fight like this, I'm going to enjoy it because this is one of the boxing insiders. But it should be way bigger than that. It should be way you, you two African Americans We the ones that own charisma Style When Oscar De La Hoya For Trinidad Trinidad is from Puerto Rico Oscar De La Hoya Is a Mexican American From East LA And that fight Was bigger Than this fight Y'all can talk what you want I know Oscar versus Trinidad Was a bigger fight Than Bud Versus Earl And I'm talking about The energy The casuals Know about that one that was a big one. And you niggas can't get it together. So, you know, I didn't ran my mouth, but that's 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 basically that's the shit, man. <laughs> you don't want to? Nah, I'm good. Y'all heard it here, man. He going, he going with Earl. I think I'm switching to Earl. It's, a, it's Earl. Earl energy look right so right he, now, bro. He said all that in the nutshell just to let it be known to the world. He going with Earl. I take that back. It's 50-50. I don't really know. Hey, look, who, look. Hey, look. But I say, hey, from what I see, hey, I like Earl energy right now. Hey, look. Yeah, that one right there, I got I, I got to be real. I, it's an open. This is a real 50-50 to me. This is a suspense fight, bro. Like, I really don't. I don't know. I know well, Earl will be if breaking the, if niggas. The, if, the, if, the, if, the, if the world, you know what I'm saying? Because this was just a conversation. Because, you know, for the world to know, we was originally talking about uh, Shakur not taking the 75-25. And bro broke it down as far as... You know what I'm saying? Just the dynamics of all this business shit. The, the business, I mean, this boxing shit. The business, all of it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but then it wrapped around and bro said he was fucking with uh, Earl. Earl for the for the Bud fight. You know what I'm saying? Energy, which I definitely, I definitely respect it. You know what I'm saying? He just, he just laid it down. He just gave it. He just broke it down, you know what I'm saying? But but for the world, just 
for my own. I'm going with Bud. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, I, I, I mean, it just is what it is. Like, I, because I'm really on the fence, to be honest. Like, originally, like he was saying, like, like, I'm on the, I, I was originally on the fence. It's like, like you're going with Bud, but, it, but really if Earl win, you ain't shot. It. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Simple, like, he just, that. that's really what it is. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, I think in the essence just to not be a nigga like, hey, I'm on the fence, man. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? It's like, fuck it. If I had to pick one type shit, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like, fuck it, man. I'm going with Bud. You know what I'm saying? But the way you just broke that shit down, like on some real shit, like, like, I definitely, I definitely can see it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I definitely can see it. Because that's, that's, that's Earl. That's what he do. You know what I'm saying? And you know what made me lean? Because I've been looking at the all access shit, right? Bo Mac, who is Bud's trainer, he damn near 400 pounds. He ain't disciplined with his own shit. Yeah. And it's like I never hear him really give Bud boxing strategy. But Derek James, who just won coach of the uh, trainer of the year, Probably should have got it two years in a row. He already got another under he got an undisputed champ in Jamel Charlo. The shit that I'm seeing on the all access, he looked like he's really in it, like like trying to study it. Like it's just giving me a different feeling. Bud and them looking like I feel like the great fights, you gotta do something a little not different, but maybe a little more. Bud to me talking more We just keeping this shit the same You know we just good It's too relaxed looking to me I like the humility Of Derrick James Watching Fume on Sir. He respect who he Nah we fighting Bud Now maybe Bud doing that When the camera off To throw it off But if not That right there it may it, EJ and them. It's 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 the legacy shit I'm talking about. It's it's bigger than who can hit hard. Who can he he? Derek James look like he getting Earl, not just the physical, bro. Mm -hmm. The 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 mind with it. Yeah. I think we gave him some good enough game right there. Yeah, here. so make sure y'all go ahead. Do it by the time. I feel like they said the game was meant to be sold, not told. Donate to the motherfucking page, man. Nah, for real. Blunt Rap ENT. Y'all already know what the landing strip is. BluntRapENT.com. We'll holler at y'all.